We are in the midst of a global IT outage right now, affecting flights, businesses, banks, healthcare providers, 911 services. A lot of businesses around the world are affected, including Microsoft, and its Windows uh, computer systems are being affected as well. Yeah, a lot of those blue screens of death, right? Uh, screens around the world this morning. This not a cyber attack, according to cybersecurity firm CrowdStrike, but rather the outage caused by a defect in an update that was just rolled out overnight while you were sleeping. What's up, guys, and welcome back to the Keep It Techie channel, your go-to for all things Linux and tech. I'm Josh, and today we got a hot topic that's been making waves in the tech world. I want to dive into the recent CrowdStrike outage that caused a lot of chaos across various sectors. From banks to airlines to media companies, this outage had a significant impact. So let's get into it and break down what happened, how it's being handled, and what it means for us in the tech community. All right, so let's start off with an overview of what exactly went down. Recently, CrowdStrike, a well-known cybersecurity company, released an update for their software. Now, updates are usually a good thing, right? Most of the time, they bring new features, security patches, and improvements. But in this case, things went kind of south. The update caused a blue screen of death or BSOD error on Windows machines running various versions of the CrowdStrike sensor. Shoot, imagine this. You're working on something important and suddenly your screen goes blue with an error message. I remember that happening years ago, but it's been a long time since I seen that blue screen of death, but that would definitely be frustrating. Well, this didn't just happen to a few people. It affected systems worldwide. Like I said in the intro, it affected banks, supermarkets, TV studios, and even airlines were hit. And speaking of the TV studios, yesterday my wife came to me complaining about the TV freezing up on the specific news channel that we typically watch. And I believe that has something to do with this issue. But it's crazy though, like flights got canceled, hospitals had to postpone surgeries and procedures, and businesses were left scrambling. Talk about crazy, right? It all started around three o'clock in the afternoon for Microsoft. Microsoft's latest update on this incident says users still may not be able to use some Microsoft 365 apps and services. Although the tech giant says several apps are back up and running and issues are being mitigated. Again, this is 365 apps for Windows. People who have Microsoft on Mac are not being impacted. And Microsoft, Microsoft said they are treating this as their highest priority. So how did CrowdStrike handle this mess? Well, first off, they acknowledged the problem quickly, which is crucial in situations like this. They posted a message on their forum advising users to not try to fix the issue themselves and to wait for an official update. And they also recommended monitoring this pin thread for latest information on Reddit. In an update, CrowdStrike CEO George Kurtz confirmed that the problem was identified and isolated. They deployed a fix and assured customers that it wasn't a security incident or a cyber attack. It wasn't a cyber attack, you know, it was related to this uh, this content update. And um, as you might imagine, we've been on, uh, you know, with our customers all night and working with them. Many of the customers are rebooting the system and it's coming up and, and uh, it'll be operational because of, uh, you know, we fixed it. On, on our end and some of the systems that aren't recovering we're working with them so uh, it could be some time for some systems that just automatically won't recover but it is you know it is our mission is why we're here to make sure that every customer is fully recovered and we're not going to relent until we get every customer back to where they were and we continue to protect them and keep the bad guys out of their systems this transparency is essential because it helps users understand that while the situation is serious, it's under control and being addressed. Now, for those dealing with the issue immediately, some steps were shared to temporarily resolve the problem. These included booting Windows into safe mode, navigating to the CrowdStrike directory, deleting a specific file, and then booting the system normally. It wasn't a perfect solution, but it helped many to get their systems back up. Now, let's talk about my thoughts on this whole situation. As someone deeply involved in the tech world, I see this as a learning opportunity for all of us. Software updates, while necessary, can sometimes cause unexpected issues. And trust me, I've dealt with some of these issues in the past. And this incident highlights the importance of thorough testing before rolling out updates, especially for something as critical as security software. 
Now, this brings me to an essential point, the importance of having updated separate environments for development, testing and production. According to your statement, it was a single content update that has managed to shut down air travel, credit card payment systems, banks, broadcasts, street lights, 911, emergency around the globe. Why is there not some kind of redundancy or some sort of backup? How is it that one single software bug can have such a profound and immediate impact? In my experience working with various organizations, implementing these separate environments is crucial. It allows you to catch issues in the development and testing phase before they hit production, reducing the risk of widespread problems like the one we're seeing with CrowdStrike. Properly managing these environments ensures that updates are thoroughly vetted and tested under conditions that mimic the production environment as closely as possible. We're always trying to stay one step ahead of the adversaries. And in this particular case, um, you know, our systems are always looking for the latest attacks from uh, these adversaries that, that are out there. So this content uh, update one out and as as it does and it's been doing for for many many years obviously we've got a robust team that's looking at the safety and security and the quality of these updates and uh, we have to go back and see what happened here but um, if there is a, a negative interaction with the way some of these operating systems work, and in this particular case, it was it was only the Microsoft operating system that was impacted, um, you'll see a reaction like this. And this is you know what we've seen here. But it also shows the resilience of the tech community. Companies like CrowdStrike have teams dedicated to quickly identifying and fixing issues. It's a reminder that while tech can be unpredictable, there's always a way to overcome challenges. And for those of you getting into tech, this is a great example of why it's essential to stay informed and be prepared for anything. Always back up your data, stay updated with the latest tech news, and know how to troubleshoot problems. It's all part of the journey in this ever-evolving field. All right, folks, that's it for today's video. The CrowdStrike outage was a significant event that disrupted many lives and businesses. But it's also a testament to the importance of cybersecurity and a need for vigilance in our digital world. Now, if you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the Keep It Techie channel for more tech insights and tutorials. Stay curious, stay informed, and as always, keep it techie. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Whenever I talk to people, whenever I mentor people uh, dealing with, you know, getting into tech, you got to figure out what you like or what you're interested in. Because, yeah, a lot of people get into the, you know, tech field because you can make a good amount of money. The money is the motivator. But you also, in my opinion, in order for you to be happy, you got to like what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? And so, like for me, a lot of times it doesn't feel like work, bro. Most times it really doesn't feel like work. It's, it's, yeah, I'm doing something fun. I'm doing something I love to do. You know what I'm saying? So that's what makes it, you know, great for me.